And welcome back uh, to the breakfast here on Plus TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is uh, going to be speaking on uh, the Nigerians in diaspora conversation, you know, and trying to expand it as much as possible. The 25th of July is uh, uh, stated as uh, Diaspora Day here in Nigeria. And there is something that is going to be run throughout the week. It's called A Week In and For Nigeria. This morning, we're going to be speaking with uh, members of uh, Nigerians in Diaspora organization, Mr. Chibuzo Obochi, who's the chairman of NIDO, and also Susan Wire, membership officer also of uh, NIDO. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Thank you. Good morning. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm honored kind of to be here. Thank you. Fantastic. All right. I'm going to start with the chairman. Nido. It's titled, or the theme is, uh, A Week In and For Nigeria. Um, so tell us a little bit about this and why all of this is taking place uh, this, this uh, time. Yeah, good morning, viewers, and good morning, and thank you for the question. Uh, as we all know, as we stated, uh, 25th of July annually is uh, celebrated as Diaspora Day, just as we have the Democracy Day and we have the Independence Day. And we do thank the government, especially the government of today, uh, for making it official and gazetted it in the National uh, Diary for Nigeria. So what happens each year is that uh, on 25th of July, we celebrate Diaspora Day. Nigerians celebrate their diaspora. So what we thought about is coming for a day simply to celebrate uh, us, the diasporans, we decided to have a program so that we can have a week to engage and celebrate Nigerians as well as they are celebrating us. So the idea of a week in, night, a week in Nigeria, or a week in, for Nigeria, was born out of not only celebrating a single day, but celebrating a whole week. So what diasporans have that done is instead of coming for that single day, we come in for a week, have programs planned before the 25th of July, mm -hmm. and some programs planned after that. So it's 22nd of July to the 29th of July that will celebrate this. A week in Nigeria is for the diaspora that can come into the country. And a week for Nigeria is for those who cannot come, but wants to do something for Nigeria. And just to bear in mind, it's not only for diaspora, it's what we say a week for Nigeria. I think you as well can do something for Nigeria for one week. And that's what we call for. Thank you. Okay, um, let's bring in Mrs. Wire here. Um, could you give us a bit more information about what sort of activities you'll be doing here in Nigeria and what sort of things, you know, should Nigerians be expecting to do? Well, thank you very much for, for, for your question. Uh, as we know, the main focus of this vision is to bring Nigerians living in the United Kingdom together and to identify those living willing to offer their skills in the health sector, economic, and uh, education, political, as well as corporate governance. And, you know, it's so doing assist Nigeria here, I mean, development of Nigeria uh, are here. So, uh, which brings us to the a week in Nigeria and for Nigeria. Uh, this is a self-funded, um, and uh, we are really, really grateful uh, for those Nigerians in diaspora that have come together, put their resources together, because this is self-funded uh, to make this uh, initiative successful. Uh, we've got a lot of um, programs lined up this week, um, starting with, uh, we, we, we started with our meetings yesterday. Uh, it's, it's going to continue today with some visits. Uh, the chairman will shine more light on, uh, on, on those visits uh, later on in the program, if you ask him. Um, one of the most important things we're going to be doing this week uh, will be on Saturday, a visit to the orphanage in the federal capital. We are going to be uh, renovating their facilities and then as, as well as um, uh, having lunch uh, with, with the orphans and, you know, kind of talking to them and making them feel loved as well. You know how lonely it is when you're in an, in an orphanage. So um, this is what we'll be doing. And I'm so happy to be part of this uh, initiative. Kudus to our chairman who has brought this. And uh, this is, uh, has become a very successful uh, initiative, which we are going to take forward uh, in the next leadership. And uh, we're not going to stop there. Thank you very much. All right. Uh, we'll come back to you, Mrs. Y. I want, I want to go back to uh, the chairman. Um, Mr. Chibuzo Ubochi, 
can you paint us a picture for us? Because uh, a lot of people aren't very clear on what exactly it, it means to be a Nigerian in diaspora. There's uh, some confusion. Is it those who were born over there? Is it those who have uh, you know, relocated and have uh, citizenship in other countries, you know, but are originally from Nigeria? Or is it just any Nigerian who travels abroad and is able to start a new life in a different country and you know, sends uh, money home every now and then? Uh, and also, what ex what, what's, the, what's the picture of uh, the life of a Nigerian living in diaspora? Uh, thank you. Uh, I think you've uh, captured all what makes uh, Nigerian in diaspora. But there's something new that I want to introduce. Because we know what Nigerians in diaspora are known for, especially is their remittances to Nigeria. But we want to introduce the idea that uh, there are some people living in Nigeria currently, working online abroad and earning money even more than those living ab abroad so it's possible to be in nigeria and through your internet activities and online platform you are working in diaspora so we are introducing the idea that you should consider yourself as earning money from diaspora and saying to nigeria so you may become one of us nigeria in diaspora but the idea of nigerians in diaspora is something that we want to water down because we've seen that we've been discriminated against once you say mm -hmm. Nigerian in diaspora, you think it's somebody strange, somebody that's a foreigner. We want to be seen as Nigerians. So we're no longer Nigerians in diaspora, in quote. We are Nigerians. We want to be able to vote, we want to be able to live in Nigeria, we want to be able to come and go, we want to be able to earn money in Nigeria, earn money abroad. The, the world is becoming a global village. I, I know people that my friends are here that came back, they are back in Nigeria, but they still work for their companies abroad. Are they Nigerians in diaspora? Just because they earn a living in diaspora? So those are questions we should ask ourselves and begin to see that we are all Nigerians. Let's leave the diaspora aspect for now and concentrate on being Nigerians. One thing that gets us so worked up is when you see us as strangers. We, we live abroad and we come to our own home country and you consider us as being diasporans. It's good to differentiate and have that, uh, that diversity to say you live abroad, but we are Nigerians. So one of the key words we want to leave today that before at, or this program is that of inclus inclusiveness. We want that inclusion to be seen as Nigerians. So Nigerians in diaspora for me now means all Nigerians that earn a living abroad, all Nigerians that live abroad, all Nigerians that have gone there. We have a first generation Nigerians, we have second generation Nigerians, we have third generation Nigerians that are there. My children were born, uh, were born abroad. They've been coming home and they, 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 they enjoy Nigeria. They're Nigerians. So we want to get to that level where Nigerians will be seen as Nigerians. Okay. So thank you, and I think we are all Nigerians. All right, Mr. Obochi, we'll talk more about Nigerians in diaspora, but you, you just mentioned the point I want us to elaborate on. So when it seems, you know, that when Nigerians living in diaspora return to Nigeria, there's a certain way they're looked at. Um, could you expantiate on that? Why does it seem like, you know, there's a, there's a perception, you know, of Nigerians living in diaspora that had just returned home? And for those who decide to relocate to Nigeria, what exactly is the motivation behind thoughts that they had made the wrong, wrong decision? Okay, thank you. One, one of the most important things is that we respect the rule of law. I will not go and park my car on the road and expect, uh, expect not to be fined or expect my car not to be clamped. I will not want poor services from, from any individual. So those are things that make us uh, different. When I come to Nigeria and I expect to give somebody a tip for, for doing their job, the job that they expect to do, I feel bad about it. It's something you are being paid for. You should be happy doing what you are doing. If you are not happy, look for a different job. If I'm, the, if I'm a truck pusher today, I want to be the best truck pusher in Nigeria. If I'm a conductor, I want to be the best conductor in Nigeria. I don't want to be there having a, a sad face, blaming the government, and still doing the job. I better leave and quit and do something else for myself. So we in Nigeria in diaspora, we have that belief that we, are, we have learned a different way of doing things, the best global practice, and want that to be embedded into all Nigerians. Do the job you are doing happily, and you'll be compensated for it. Okay, Mr. Abachi, and, so it's an, issue of, it's an issue of, you know, mindset, how you have, you know, been acclimatized regarding what is obtainable in those countries. So when you come here to practice that, it then seems like, you know, you're being different, and that's, that's the motivation for that. That's what you're saying, right? That's, that's what I think I'm saying, and that of timekeeping, I, I don't go late to things, but I uh, will have that concept of Nigerian time, where people come to 
who have civil servants that we don't know what they do. We should all have uh, what we do, be sure what we're doing, and make sure we end a living. We don't come to work, we work from 8 o'clock, and by 3 o'clock, you are gone. And you expect to be paid for five hours. We, we, we pay on hourly basis. I put in the hours. I'm a workaholic. I do three, four jobs. At the same time, I multitask. And I'm happy about it. I earn a living. It's, it's my hard earned money. I pay my taxes. And I expect the government to, to be responsible. And to be, I, I can challenge the government any day in, in the UK because I'm paying my taxes. But in Nigeria, because some people don't pay their taxes, they feel the government is uh, owe them something because there's oil or you don't pay taxes and you expect the government to do the road. But if you pay taxes, if the government doesn't do the road, I think you hold them accountable. So one of the things we expect from the government and from Nigerians, our brothers and sisters, is to pay your tax. If you're a banana seller, pay a tax for one naira. And because you're paying that tax for one naira, you know it's your money that you're paying to the government. If the government gets anything wrong, you should be able to challenge them because you put in your money to the government. But if you don't pay your tax, sometimes you leave things uh, to lie. So I want that culture to be embedded in all of us as Nigerians. And those of us coming back, we also want to do that. We we'll live by example and we want to be incorporated. That inclusion, we want to be able to be incorporated into what is being done in Nigeria. Okay. All right. Um, let me bring, uh, let's go back to. Um, Sorry, could I quickly uh, add to what uh, uh, the chairman, yes, uh, Sir Chibuzo, said? Yeah, if, if, if I, I may, please. Go ahead. Please. Uh, already, Niger Nigerians in the UK are already making significant contributions to the Nigerian economy. And I'm not just talking about the remittances and everything, okay? You've got two programs uh, and uh, IT information policies, third sectors. You know, you, you've got surgeons from there, you've got uh, entrepreneurs uh, that, that are in the country from, from the diaspora. And uh, we, we just want to be given uh, some fair treatment and opportunity to excel in this uh, uh, environment as well. There's so many other Nigerians who want to return home. Uh, you have politicians, you know, I'm a politician as well, but I'm not going to talk about politics today. I know what, how I suffered from 2015 when I contested. Let's they come back home to support the politicians and put them where they are there. And after all that, they share these powers and everything. And, and forget about us, you know, I have to start going back uh, to start all over again. I want to come back home. I'm going to be 50, uh, 53 next year. I want to come back home. And I want uh, to be empowered, and not just me, I want other Nigerians should be empowered and encouraged to come back home and contribute positively. And I think it's a very serious matter that we should, uh, that the Nigerian government should start taking seriously. We are not uh, outsiders or out outcasts. We are just Nigerians living in diaspora, trying to make a difference. So uh, I, I hope that uh, uh, helps as well. Okay, so um, now let's uh, stay with that um, in that space. I, I want to ask about helping or what is needed to change the narrative of Nigerians living in diaspora, being seen as uh, people who are committing crimes in other countries. If you see when some of the stories are posted of, you know, well, very, very bad stories, there's always um, a feeling, you know, that you, you get from the comment section and from the reaction of a lot of people saying, oh, Nigerians have gone to disgrace us again and things like that. Mm -hmm. So how can we shed more light on the Nigerians who are doing exceptionally well in sports, in information technology, in science and technology, in, in healthcare? Um, there's so many of, of Nigerians who are living an, a very honest and, you know, a, a beautiful life outside Nigeria. Um, so how can we shed more light on those Nigerians and uh, reduce the amount of attention uh, that, um, you know, the bad stories get oh well thank you very much for that question um you see um i'm a mother uh i've got uh, two young boys um they are graduates at master's level they came back here to serve in the nyc uh and uh they are working uh you know but you've got very few nigerians who, who live here and go abroad and and, and start uh, getting involved in uh some shady uh, businesses. If you, if, you, if you do your research properly, you will see that the Nigerians living abroad, living in the diaspora, are not really involved in this uh, 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 well, act. You know, you've got the Anthony uh, Joshua, who is doing us proud. You've got the nurses who lost their lives during the COVID, Nigerian nurses and doctors and surgeons who lost their lives 
uh, in the fight for COVID, just trying to save others. You've got a whole lot of professionals out there who are doing exploits. You've got so many success stories. And in fact, I'm sure uh, our honorable distinguished Ngozi Awela is a, uh, a Nigerian a returnee as well in the diaspora. Who is she today? Look at how what she is doing. Uh, you've got uh, honorable uh, Debbie, uh, who was uh, uh, in, the, in the UK there with us, and she's now had to do, you know, she's doing wonderfully well. So we should be talking about this positive uh, uh, positive, uh, you know, positive, uh, uh, how do I say it, uh, positive vibes from, from, from all these uh, 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 leaders or from all these um, uh, youths. Uh, I'm finding the right ways, uh, the right words to, to put it. So maybe uh, Sir, Sir Chuzo can help me with that. Okay. But, um, we are doing quite well over there. M Mr. Obochi. I, I think I think to be encouraged to do more. Indeed. Mr. Obochi, I, I want you to pick up from there. How exactly can we encourage Nigerians, you know, so we can begin to change that narrative of Nigerians being criminals, you know, in other parts of the world. So we, regarding this, you know, perception of Nigerians committing crimes, even in nearby countries like Ghana, Benin Republic, friends of mine who live there say, oh, if you were robbed, it's most likely in Nigeria, not even a citizen of that country. So is it that most Nigerians who are abroad um, cannot get jobs? Is it a lack of education? What exactly is the root cause of this, you know, perception that Nigerians, you know, go abroad to commit crimes? Yeah, thank you. I think uh, I'll have to be practical on this. Uh, we have over, we estimate to have over 7 million Nigerians in diaspora. Uh, of these 7 million Nigerians in diaspora, 90% or 99% of them are good citizens. They don't commit any crime. It's just a few percentage that we're always here committing crime. The one practical thing that can be done is for the government to facilitate an umbrella organization. And we already have NIDO, which we know the Nigerian Diaspora Organization is NIDO. If we can have the government facilitating NIDO and making sure all Nigerians in diaspora belongs to NIDO, that will go a long way. What we mean is that every Nigerian abroad will be a member of NIDO. And once you're a member of NIDO, you have that network of connectivity, you have a network of friends, you have people you can always relate with, you have people that can ask questions. One, one other uh, cultural, uh, cultural thing that I like about the Igbos is something they call the age group. When you are in a certain age group, you know your mates, you know your friends, you can't commit crime. If you do commit crime, your friends know who you are and they can always checkmate you. So if you have an umbrella organization like NIDO, where all Nigerians in diaspora are encouraged or promoted to belong to, you have that ability to know who is who in Nigeria and who is who in the diaspora, who are the ones committing crimes. How can we work with them and, and encourage them? Sometimes crimes are committed because of uh, necessity. Not that it's a good thing, but when you cannot eat, you cannot uh, pay your rent, some good side to use other shortcuts to get it. But when, when you are illegal, you don't have the, you have regularized your papers. So who we'll use shortcuts to, to get there? One thing we did in Nido UK South, uh, recently in UK, was to pay the rents of some Nigerians that uh, lost their jobs. Say they were unable to pay their, pay their rents due to COVID. We had to pay their rents, the rest, the rest of them. If unfortunately we are not able to pay their rents, they may be forced to go uh, to do certain things that will not be permitted by, by, by the law. So encouraging an umbrella organization like NIDO and the government ensuring that all Nigerians in diaspora are encouraged to be there, not having one million different organizations and not promoting an umbrella organization, that will make people to, die, uh, to diverse and do different things. So I will encourage that all Nigerians in diaspora should key in and become members of NIDO. They don't have to pay, there's no membership fee if they want to be, they can't just be members without paying any membership fee. That will encourage them to network with Nigerians living abroad in their own local communities and get help whenever it's needed. And one of the things that you can do for us as journalists is to continue to promote a good image of uh, those of us that are doing good, positive things for Nigeria. We know recently, I think last week, a Nigerian was nominated to be uh, by the UK for the International Law Commission. It's a Nigerian, and this is a global, well-renowned uh, organization, the IOC. So Nigerians are doing great things. We know about the uh, who owns the Gatwick Airport in the UK. It's a Nigerian. 
We know a lot of councillors and MPs that are Nigerians, not only the UK, but in Italy and also in Belgium. So Nigerians are doing great things, and journalists and to promote these things, and the government should also encourage everyone going abroad maybe to become a member of NIDO so you can have that network of friendship, network of uh, calling you, being a brother's keeper, okay. and then you can be able to prevent uh, all negative activities. Okay. Um, you know, there's also um, certain angles. Uh, every now and then we also talk about uh, Nigerians who are in either captivity or imprisoned in different countries. Um, is there any work that you feel NIDO needs to maybe do to give support to these people? If you remember a couple of years ago, there, there was this um, story that went viral of Nigerians being, you know, slaves in Libya and, um, you know, other uh, stories like that. Um, is there any extra work that needs to be done by NIDO and other, you know, similar groups to um, help Nigerians who are in very bad situations in other countries? Yeah, let me start with that. I, the NIDO is doing a lot on that uh, basis. I think some of those things went viral because NIDO was involved. I remember the one in, in, in India. NIDO has to have a, a social media campaign and it went viral. NIDO visits, uh, we do visit our brothers and sisters that are in prison and we do talk to them and see, ask them how, how we can help them. I happen to be a practicing lawyer in the UK and I happen to have done uh, prison law before uh, version now to family law and other uh, criminal law matters. But there was a time my specialist was on prison law and I visit, I think I visited all prisons in the UK. So NIDO visits uh, members in prison. The one thing which I'm going back to what I said before is for us to encourage all Nigerians to be part of NIDO. Once you are part of NIDO, if we don't hear from you within some few weeks, so you, you, we'll, we'll, ask, we'll ask where you are and try to be our brother's keeper. But when you are not part of NIDO and you are hiding somewhere, we don't know you are there, things may go wrong and you will not have anybody to, to know what has happened. We we'll have somebody that died recently in the UK and he was locked up for about two, three days before uh, the, the police broke his home. But if he was a member of NIDO, so one member, our welfare department would make contact. So going back to that, if any Nigerian in that way is listening to us today, please look for the local NIDO in your area. Do join. You, if you don't have the money to pay to be a, a financial member, do join as a, as a member and make sure you have your details. Our welfare department will from time to time check on you. What we did during the COVID-19 uh, pandemic was to call most Nigerians in the UK, and I think other chapters do replicated what we are doing. We are calling our friends, our brothers, every Nigerian, we are calling them to find out how they are faring. And we did even we give uh, financial benefits to some of them that lost their, their loved ones. These are charitable things that we do from NIDO's angle without any government uh, intervention or, or support. But if the government happens to key into what we are doing and recognize NIDO as the sole umbrella organization for all Nigerians living in diaspora, that will encourage and promote people to take NIDO seriously and join NIDO and we'll all be our brother's keeper. Okay, thank you, Mr. Ubochi. Um, let's bring in Mrs. Waya now. Um, Mrs. Waya, how can Nigeria come in? Uh, you know, to make sure that Nigerians in diaspora are protected because at the end of the day, they are Nigerians. So how do you think the Nigerian government can come in? And uh, I know you might not want to exactly say where exactly we're lagging behind in terms of the government, but how exactly can they come in? What, what, you know, what holes can they fill? Uh, well, thank you very much. Uh, I think if the Nigerian government will provide an enabling environment for all citizens, it will make a whole lot of difference. Because you see, um, we've got these issues of uh, insecurities, kidnapping, and, and the rest of them. And even in your house, at schools and everything, you know. So if they will provide, if they will take care of these insecurities and all that, I think Nigerians will be happy to, to move about freely doing their own uh, uh, businesses. And that is number one. You know, I mean, if the security is there, I, I think everything will be made possible for 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 a citizen because um, we all deserve safety we deserve uh, an enabling uh, society but, you know without that i don't see how we can function properly and you know despite the gloomy uh, story about kidnapping and everything we still made our time to come out 
uh, to to carry out this uh, initiative a week in Nigeria and all that because Nigeria is our country we can't keep running away from it but the government they need to do more they need to do more and it's so easy they can't do it it's done so what what can they do and how responsive is the um, can you hear me Mrs. Wire? I can hear you. I'm saying in practical terms, I, I understand where you're coming from, talking about how the insecurity in Nigeria seems to have an effect on the perception of how Nigerians are seen in diaspora. But what exactly can the Nigerian government do for people, in for Nigerians in diaspora? And also, how responsive is the Nigerian embassy in the UK to the you know needs and concerns of Nigerians you know in diaspora? Well, I think, okay, with what is happening on the, the Diaspora Day 25th, uh, I'm looking forward to that discuss, which is a Diaspora Integration uh, and National Peace and Development. And I'm sure they're going to be covering uh, all the expectations uh, uh, there. I'm looking forward uh, to that. And uh, re as regards to the Nigerian Embassy, they are, they are doing their best. I think they have revamped the... Uh, the, 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 the high commission with the new high commission in there a lot of uh, uh, changes you can even see changes when you apply for passports now online you get it immediately uh, within uh, a week like within a week you just get your passport and, and every other thing so and it's a continuous process uh, and um, I'm sure we are getting uh, more positive results uh, to, 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 to that regard all right. And the other question which I have forgotten, I don't know what it is that you, you asked. I said, what exactly, can... yes, I was asking what, like, specifically can the Nigerian government do to protect Nigerians in diaspora? Yeah, when I, when I to protect Nigerians living in the diaspora, it's, it's just to provide them with, uh, uh, to engage them, you know? Uh, uh, could you just shine more light on that? I mean, apart from protecting them and engaging them and involving them, in a whole lot of uh, uh, discuss. All um, right, Mr. Obachi, you can come in. Yeah, uh, yeah thank, thank you very you. much. I, I think the key word that I will repeat again is inclusion. Inclusion. We need to be included in everything that has been done. We are Nigerians. We want to be able to vote and be voted for. That's so important to us. Once we are able to vote and be voted for, we feel we feel part of part of the whole part of Nigeria. Once we cannot vote and we cannot be voted for, we, we feel discriminated. So the most important thing the government can do for us now is to ensure, what I mean the government, the, the National Assembly especially for now, is to ensure that we are able to vote and be voted for. This is the right time for it to be done. Uh, countries like Chad, they are already, their diasporans are voting, so why not Nigeria, the giant of Africa? We right. should be able to vote and be voted for. Then secondly, we need to have the recognition of NIDO as the central organization for all Nigerians living in diaspora. I know the government has said so in the past and many times, but it needs to be re-emphasized and uh, made known to all Nigerians living in diaspora that we have an organization called NIDO. They should all key into it and through it, they can be able to engage with the government. We also need to, the government need to facilitate some incentives for diasporas to return. Uh, the we know they say there's, there's ease in doing business in Nigeria, but I think it's getting a bit difficult now, especially with the uh, CAC. Racing company in Nigeria may be easy, but things that follow after that, the regularization, the filing of papers, they are getting a bit difficult. So those also, those are things that can be facilitated as well. So for us, the most important thing is inclusion, inclusion, inclusion. Make us feel Nigerians. Make us feel part of what is being happened, what is happening. Make us part of the government. And the only way this can be done is by giving us that right to vote and be voted for. All right. Um, the um, diaspora voting conversation, I believe, um, I would agree, is very, very important. And it's one of the things that I, I think will be a continued uh, conversation. Um, Susan, why I'm coming back to you. Um, I want you to share with us, you know, what for you is the most exciting part of this week um, of celebrating Nigerians in diaspora. I look forward to visiting the orphanage. And that will be the most exciting uh, uh, time of my life. I love to visit the, the orphanage. We're all looking forward to visiting the, you know, the orphanage and doing uh, renovating their facility, and then uh, attending the diaspora day and hearing what the discuss is all about, and seeing and you know hearing about ways 
the government uh, is going to include us in decision making as well. I'm looking forward to that. Okay, now how and can... so far, it has been a very peaceful visit. Oh, thank God. <laughs> okay, I was, I was, I was going to ask how can other Nigerians also um, uh, get involved with the activities this week? Do they, you know, meet you at the orphanage? Do they have to maybe donate funds or do they just, you know, join the programs uh, all through the week? I mean, they could do, they could, they could donate, they could join us at a facility, they could, you know, meet us at, you know, the more the merrier. This, this is what we're all about. It's not just us from, from uh, uh, UK, but it's, it's with everybody. And that would be really nice. Well, we're prepared to, like, uh, uh, you know, host our Nigerian brothers and sisters here. And it, donations are welcome. Like I said, this is self-funded. We are not asking people to go out of there. We know how difficult things are. Uh, but, you know, the more the merrier and uh, more donations can come in so we can paint more and renovate more schools, uh, facilities for the orphanage and other other facilities that need, requires, uh, you know, renovating. Yeah, that would be a welcome idea. Thank you. Fantastic. Thank you very much, Susan Wyatt, Membership Officer of Nigerians in Diaspora Commission, NIDO. And thank you, Mr. Chibuzo Bochi, Chairman, NIDO UK South. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes. Have a great week in Nigeria for Nigerians. Thank you. Oh, thank you. Is it over? I was hoping that you were going to offer us a cup of tea since it's a morning break. We will be sending that over to Abuja. <laughs> do, do stay tuned. <laughs> thank okay. you. All right. Uh, we'll be talking about the Olympics next with Wally Scott.